they basically said, hey, you know, uh, we're going to be number one in AI. Uh, we've got all the our data and we've got your data. You really can't compete. What he says is we want to become the Saudi Arabia of data. What are you most worried about when it comes to TikTok? When Trump went to um, China, I, I can't remember who told him, but they basically said, hey, you know, uh, we're going to be number one in AI. Uh, we've got all the our data and we've got your data. You really can't compete uh, with that because you can't really collect data as a, as a government and, and drive all the resources of the state to become the most powerful country in artificial intelligence. So we're going to dominate the world that's coming and get in line or don't. And we'll either keep me, keep you in uh, plugged in or we'll cut you off. Um, those are powerful, powerful ideas, right? What, um, what the um, former um, head of Google China, I uh, wrote the book, AI Superpower. What he says is we want to become the Saudi Arabia of data, right? What does that mean? Well, that oil, that's oil for AI engines. We want to be dominant in artificial intelligence. And by doing that, we can, we can use all these tools, tools like ByteDance's algorithms, um, to, 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 to begin to man, manipulate the world in ways that we want. And I think recognizing that and recognizing that certainly since um, 2007 when the iPhone came out and then shortly thereafter, about a couple years later when 4G networks started, iPhone on a 3G network was was trash. It's like a, it was, it was fun for a little bit, but then you, you, you really didn't get a good user experience. But when they had a 4G network and you really had broadband, a broadband cellular link that you could connect that device, now I've got something that I can get you hooked on. I can, I can create applications, I can get you, so now, you know, everybody just kind of stares at these things. When that happened, this ability to bypass, you know, um, these two big oceans that protect us and these two friendly borders and go directly to the heart of American civilization, that's what we created. And all you have to do is look at, hey, here's how these big tech companies manipulate you, the narrative, manipulate your behavior to make money from you, right? They're, they're, they're the 25% of S&P 500, the most economically powerful companies, you know, ever, and, and most influential companies ever. And so the Chinese Communist Party just, just takes, takes that in, learns about it, and then begins to iterate on it, right? They've, they've taken your technology and then they've advanced it for their own interests in ways that what are you most worried about when it comes to the to TikTok in China? Well, I mean, just the ability to um, take the take our population to manipulate it to manipulate it and manipulate it in ways that number one reduce national productivity and number two get them to um, not appreciate the principles and values that are in our society. Right? Why? Why is the Constitution? Why the separation of powers? And so, getting back to that. You know, that, um, that what does it mean? It means the separation of powers really no longer exists. It's kind of a function of the 20th century because now we've gone in the 20th century where um, the narrative has become so hard to get past. I'm not saying China created the narrative. You, you mentioned it yourself. These tech companies um, have a certain political ideology you know, Elon just said, hey, 99% of Twitter was was um, basically donated to a single party. And as we've seen, that is starting to, that has, you know, basically crept into the tech companies. Well, and the Chinese Communist Party, to the sense, to, this, um, to the, um, to the fact that it actually benefits, is, is more than happy to um, use that as a tool to, get its interests met. So, you know, in a lot of ways, the way that they manipulate us is through these corporate and financial relationships, and that's tied right into the tech company relationships. And so, you know, the fact that Apple wants to sell phones in China is a, is a great piece of leverage for the Chinese Communist Party, right? You want to be in China? Okay, well, this is what we want you to do. And so, you know, it, it is a way for, um, and and I don't think, I'm not calling what's happened in this country kind of a, a movement towards um, what, um, if you, have you read Cynical 
theories. I have not. It, it's a really good book. It kind of talks about the history of um, post uh, postmodern post postmodernism and how um, you know theories like um, critical race theory and and DEI have become started out as more or less a a um, an ineffective critique of the um, of the Western order, you know, post Enlightenment Western order, uh, kind of on the same line as Marxism, but um, became more than just a critique in universities and kind of like a sideshow to transition to more of an activist tone, and kind of walks you through that. You know, starts in France. And then kind of uh, builds and builds and builds to where, and so when I was getting my PhD in the university, I was starting to hear some of these things, but I really didn't understand kind of where it was going. And now it's fully matriculated throughout our university system. And then it's made because our students are coming out and they're coming into white collar jobs. A lot of them, you know, Silicon Valley um, software developers. Um, now you've started to kind of build this throughout the framework of our society. And so if you look at China just as, a, um, as an influence engine, how the system works, you know, the party gives narratives centrally, and that gets uh, you know, it gets uh, sent down to the, to the local level. And so you have then a pretty comprehensive, clear-cut narrative that is, is the same across the country. And that's why when you talk to a Chinese person, they have certain responses to things like, what do you think about Taiwan? It's Chinese territory because that is part of that whole process. Well, if you take a step back and you say, okay, what's going on here in the United States? It's effectively, we've created the, the same system. It's not a single party authoritarian system. It's more of a, um, it's more of an, a, an ideology that, ex, that escaped the university system, became embedded in the white collar class, and then became a patina over the entire um, uh, architecture. And then when you, as the internet begins to um, grow, um, local media begins to lose value, be sold off, you know, consolidated. So now you have basically five major legacy, we call them uh, media companies. I would, you know, it's better to think of them more as propaganda companies um, that have a similar kind of narrative that spreads to the technology companies. And then, so now you have a reinforcing kind of phenomenon where um, I just mentioned, you know, 99% of uh, Twitter employees were donating to a single political party. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.